The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said, "There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, 'Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me.'" So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and travelled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, "How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger." I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, "Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands." So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off. His father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, "Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son." But the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead, and is alive again. He was lost. And is found, and they began to celebrate the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, we have heard this parable many times and reflected about it. this father had how many children two children who are they elder son and younger son praise the lord we call him call this younger one prodigal son but i think both children were prodigal sons but the real prodigal one the younger one one thing we are sure that prodigal son has come back and he has returned and he repented and got into the family once again but the elder one he was also a prodigal son we have no idea whether he was changed or not praise the lord so more than the younger one the elder one is dangerous many a time we we do not belong to that younger one's cat- category but we belong to the elder one's category we are always with the father we make sure that we go to church every day we pray we work hard 
we do all our duties that are entrusted to us but at the same time in our heart to heart we are jealous of others who are enjoying the world we say oh they all are enjoying their life i'm here 24 hours praying rosary family prayer community prayer going for daily mass and not going for not drinking not smoking i'm wasting my life i have seen people doing this and some of them do because they are frightened of their parents some of them do because they don't want to spoil their name though in their heart to heart they want to enjoy these kinds of things but still they want to keep the image praise the lord these kinds of people are dangerous you know the prodigal son the younger one he came one day and said father give me my property that belong to me then he collected and he went to a distant country why did he go to a distant country anyway he got his property he could have enjoyed at home but he didn't enjoy at home because he wanted a separation from his father because father's presence will always inflict some kind of restrictions upon everyone for example when you all go for picnic when you go for picnic you may take anybody along with you except your parents because the presence of parents will always bring some restrictions unknowingly or knowingly even if they don't open their mouth the mere presence itself will bring some restrictions therefore you don't want their presence when you go for an enjoyment so this is exactly what happened to the prodigal son when he collected the property which was given by his father he could have enjoyed there itself but his intention is wrong he knew what he is going to do what he is planning to do is not so good so he wanted a separation many people keep a distance from their father from our lord jesus because they have something to hide they have some hidden agenda that is why in this modern world many youngsters they keep themselves aloof from the church no and they bring some justification saying all the priests are bad and the church is not good and this and that there is no god these are all nonsense this is only an excuse everyone believes in god praise the lord whether you like it or not you believe in god even atheists they also believe in god i remember one boy he came and said father i believe there is no god i said i believe there is god then he said no i believe there is no god i said i believe there is god again he said i believe there is no god i said both of us are believers praise the lord there is no god is his god there is god is my god no one can believe no one can live on this earth without believing in something or somebody sometimes we ask for the proofs for the existence of god but that is also nonsense because there are many things we believe without proofs i remember some time back a doctor came to our retreat center and he said you know in uk i'm coming from uk we have a retreat center there in uk and uk every every one every one who is there has to be uh, connected to a gp you know gp gp means you, you have to be connected to a doctor and then this doctor is the one who is supposed to take care of you for everything every sickness you have to go through this gp you can't go directly to anyone you have to go through this gp so i remember one doctor who is practicing somewhere else in uk and he came for a retreat and he came and said father i have some secret to tell you don't tell anyone i said okay i won't tell anyone and he said father i'm not a doctor this document i have produced is a fake one and he got job by producing a fake document remember i have not revealed his identity praise the lord so then the moment he said this i was shocked i remembered my gp praise the lord but till next time when i got a headache or a, a fever i went to my gp i never asked for his 
you know, certificate. I just believed him. Praise the Lord. There are many things we believe without any proof. But then why do you ask for proof for the existence of God? Because you have some hidden agenda. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And remember, no one can prove the existence of God. Because we are all are limited by time and space. You know, there is gradation of life. There is gradation of life. For example, plants, they have life. But they can't move. They can't move. They can't speak. They can't see. They can't think. So, if you explain to a plant, for example, this plant here, if you explain to them about movement, they won't understand. Because they've never seen, never experienced, never know this movement. But higher degree, higher gradation of life in uh, animals, they know how to move. They move, they feel, they experience, but they can't think. They don't have wisdom. They don't have intellect. They do according to the instinct. So if you explain to a dog about wisdom, suppose you saw your dog and you said, my dear dog, do you know what is wisdom? Then the dog will bark. But it will never explain what is wisdom because he never experienced wisdom. Suppose if you ask the plants what is movement, the plants will appoint so many people, so many other plants, and a commission is arranged to check and find out what exactly movement is. At the end, the plants will come and say, movement means this, this, this. Then we will say, no. Why? Because they can't experience it. They can't explain it because they never experienced it. If you ask the dog what is wisdom, what is knowledge? What is intellect? Then the dogs, even if they have appointed so many people to examine, I mean investigate, but they can't find out. They can't find out. They will come with many answers, but you will say, no, 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 because they never experienced it. At the end, they will say, it's a mystery. Then we will say, yes, correct answer. Praise the Lord. The same way, when it comes to the human being, we have movement, we have intellect, we know what is wisdom, but we are still not the perfect life, perfect life. We are not the perfect one. We know what is wisdom, what is knowledge, what is intellect. But at the same time, there is a higher degree of life that is God. Jesus said, I am the life, the perfection of life. Therefore, even if we try our best to understand who God is, and what God is, what happens to God, and all these details, we will never explain it. Even NASA, none of these scientists, nobody can explain it. Because they are all limited. They all are limited in the gradation of life. And at the end, if they say, this is, this is God, or this is how God behaves, then God will say, no, no. But if you say, at the end, if, suppose if they say, God is a mystery, then God say, correct answer. Praise the Lord. That is why the Catholic Church proclaims, God is a mystery. Trinity is a mystery. Uh, you know, Fulton Jeshin, Bishop Fulton Jeshin, once he was explaining to the people about the Holy Trinity, after the explanation, before the, he started the explanation, he said, the Holy Trinity is a mystery, we can't explain it completely. And after the two hours of talk, when he came out of the stage, one lady came and said, Bishop Fulton Jeshin, you said initially, in the beginning you said, Holy Trinity is a mystery. But you explained the Holy Trinity so well, that it is no more a mystery. Then Fulton Jeshin said, that means I have explained wrongly. Praise the Lord. That means I have explained wrongly. If I have explained who Holy Trinity is, then it will, it will continue to be a mystery because we can't explain. That's the answer. Is that clear? 
therefore we can't find who god is so let's come back to this point the prodigal son he left the father he kept a distance from god distance from his father and he went to a distant country because he had something to hide and he wanted to enjoy his life he separated himself from his father and went to a distant country and scan squandered everything in dissolute living and he lost everything what did he lose he lost the property given by his father everyone who moves away from the presence of god will lose the properties which are given by god the father for you which are the properties given by the father the love of god happiness holiness peace of mind the joy of the spirit in the heart these are the properties of the holy spirit properties of the father which god has given to you all when you move away from the presence of god one by one you will sacrifice all these properties one by one you will start losing the anointing one by one you will lose the holiness that is why we read in the word of god revelation chapter 2 4 my dear children i have something against you i have something against you you have abandoned the love you had at first you were not like this some years ago when you were small you were full of holiness full of happiness full of joy full of peace you used to love everyone when you commit a small sin you used to go for confession immediately and when you cry out when you have the family prayer you used to cry out and call the name of jesus with lots of love in your heart and you are full of holiness you are so good but now what happened to you now you are getting angry very fast getting irritated very fast when you open your mouth you speak all bad words abusive language and, and swearing words and even for small small things you are not able to forgive your family members forgive your friends you are keeping grudge and anger against your own family members your own companions and you are keeping a distance from them you were not like these everyone loved you everyone accepted you but now you have no friends because it is hard for the friends to make friendship with you therefore the lord says what happened to you how come you became like this but now what happened to you you have lost your anointing the lord is telling you that's why the word of god says revelation 24 i have something against you my children you have abandoned the love you had at first therefore remember from when did you start falling down when did you start losing your anointing and start doing the things which you did at first the prodigal son he left his father and he started losing all the properties is given by the father he lost holiness he lost peace of mind he lost his dignity he lost the image at the end even the nature was against him there was a famine famine was so severe that he could not survive he had to depend on some other human beings he became a slave anyone who goes away from the presence of god will become a slave one day I remember some time back the first day of the retreat one boy came to our retreat center here and he came straight to my room and said father I don't want to be here I want to leave this place I said when did you come I just came Then if you didn't want to be here then why did you come Then he said my parents brought me here they forced me to be here I want to leave now there is something special here once you are inside this compound you can't get out without the permission praise the lord so he knew it's impossible and therefore he wanted the permission i said i can't give you permission without the permission of your parents then he said my parents won't give me permission then i said neither i and then he knew no way you can get the permission then he asked me father what are you doing here then i said i'm assistant director here preaching the word of god early morning and celebrate the mass and then have preaching confession counseling and evening adoration and go to sleep next day get up early morning and then again morning prayer and then go for mass and give the talk and adoration counseling confession go to sleep and the next day get up and early morning do the same thing and then weekend retreat gets over and then we start the next retreat and we continue like this for the last so many years 
Then he said, he felt pity for me. And he said, Father, I'm so sorry. You, God has given you so beautiful life, but you are wasting your life. There is a lot of enjoyment and happiness outside there, Father. God has created all these things for us to enjoy. Now you are in this compound, sitting in your room, meeting the people, praying, meeting the people, praying, going to sleep and eating in between, and then get up in the early morning and do the same thing. Where is time for you to enjoy your life? You have no holy day? I said, for me, every day is holy day. Sacred day. Praise the Lord. Then he said, Father, if you are willing, I will take you. I will show you what is freedom is. What is enjoyment in this world? Then I said, I'm interested. He was so shocked. He didn't, he didn't think that I will be interested so fast. Normally we take six days to change people, but he six, changed me within six minutes. And then he said, are you sure, Father? I, I said, yes, I'm sure. I'm ready to come with you. Take me wherever you want me to come and give me and show me the freedom that you are talking about. The enjoyment, the happiness, the freedom that you are talking about. But one condition. Then he asked me, what is the condition? The condition is this. First, you attend the whole retreat. The whole six days of retreat from Sunday to Friday. And then, if, you're, if you have attended without skipping any session, and at the end of the retreat, you come and meet me. And call me. I'm ready to come with you. And then he said, yes, Father. And then he called his friends and said, Father Joseph is going to come with me after the retreat. Please arrange so and so and all those things. And he, he uh, spoke to his friends and arranged everything for me. All the enjoyment that he was talking. And then he went to attend the retreat. On the third day morning, early morning, it was only four o'clock. I went to sleep the previous day. I went to sleep late, so I was fast asleep. And then four o'clock, I heard a knock at my door. I raised my voice and said, who is that? First I didn't hear any response. Then again I heard a noise, knock. And then again I raised my voice. Then I heard, it's I am. <laughs> then I remembered Moses, got up immediately. And, and then changed my dress and came out to see the I am who I am. Then I saw this boy was standing there outside. I was so disappointed. And he was walking to and fro, disturbed. And he said, Father, I can't stay here anymore. I want to leave this place now. I said, it's only four o'clock. You can't live like this. Then he said, no, I can't stay here anymore. Then I said, my dear son, I told you I will come with you only after the retreat, not in between the retreat. I have a lot of duties to finish here. So you can't go like this. Then he said, Father, even if you are, you are not coming, I'm not interested, I'm going. Then looking at him, the way he was behaving, the way he was disturbed, restless, I knew these are the symptoms of withdrawal symptoms. Withdrawal symptoms. You know withdrawal symptoms, right? Withdrawal symptom means if someone is addicted to some alcohol or drugs or something, and if you don't get the alcohol for one or two days, then you will have some reactions in your body. Restlessness, sleeplessness, and you won't be able to sleep, you will start sweating, you will be restless in the class, you can't sit continuously for more than one hour, you will be going out, coming on bike. So my dear brothers and sisters, these are called withdrawal symptoms. So I knew he has got some withdrawal symptoms. So I asked him, my dear son, come down, come and sit here. And he was sitting in front of me. I asked him, Tell me the truth. Are you addicted to drinks? Then he said, Yes, Father. Not only drinks, I'm addicted to drugs. I'm also addicted to pornography. I can't sleep without taking all these, without watching, it, watching dirty movies. I can't sleep. For the last two days here, I didn't get these. Now I'm restless. I want to get it, otherwise I will die. Then I looked at him. He was not looking at my face. I asked him, my dear son, two days ago, you promised me that you are going to give me freedom and happiness, enjoyment. But let me ask you, are you really free? Then looking down, he said, no father, 
I'm a slave of alcohol. I'm a slave of drugs. I'm a slave of pornography. I'm not free. My dear brothers and sisters, the world will promise you freedom. In the name of freedom, in the name of enjoyment, happiness, they are making you slaves. They are making you slaves. Prodigal son, he thought he can enjoy without the father. He left the father, collected all the property and went to a distant country and started enjoying. But later he came to know he became a slave. Then he knew in his father's house, even the servants were considered as children, his own sons. They had a, they had a status. So he said, my father's house is better. I will be a slave there than being here. Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, you will never experience the joy and happiness that you experience here in the retreat center, anywhere in the world. Even if you go to the ends of the earth, even if you go to the, all the most famous picnic spots and trying to enjoy, you will never get the happiness and joy that you receive in a single small adoration or worship that you experience here in the divinity center. You will never experience anywhere.